Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, before we do get started, I want to uh, encourage you, if you've not already, to pick up your copy of Slime Incorporated. It's my first ever full-length detective novel, and in it, private investigator Cole Eustink investigates a case of murder and political intrigue set against the backdrop of the Idaho governor's race. It's available as a paperback, an ebook, and now as an audiobook through audible.com. And you can see a list of all the items I've written at uh, uh, store.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for today's episode of The Saint. The original air date is April the 15th of 1951, and the title is... Strange Bedfellows. The Adventures of the Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Hello? This is Long Distance. I have a call from Mr. Simon Templer. This is he. One moment, please. Hello, Kenton. I have your party on the line. Hold on, please, Mr. Templer. Mayor Towers is calling. Hello, Templer. How are you, Mr. Mayor? How's your campaign coming? Templer, could you get up here to my home right away? I know it's asking a lot, but this is urgent. Most urgent. Certainly. What's it all about? Well, I, I don't like to say too much over the phone, Templer, but something has come up which could very well cost me my office. Of course, that's nothing, but it might cost me the life of my son. Bill? I'll take the first plane I can get. Oh, thank you, my boy. Thank you. And, uh, Templar, say nothing to anyone. Nothing. Yes? Mayor Towers sent for me. Uh, Simon Templar. Oh, come in, Templar. Come in. Thank you. Good of you to come so promptly. We appreciate it. I'm J. Chase Finley, the mayor's confidential secretary. Will you come right this way, please? Oh, thank you. It's a very imposing home. I haven't been here before. We like it. In here, please. Simon Templer, Mr. Mayor. Templer, good to see you again, Simon. Much too long. Much. How are you? Well, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, listen to him. Russ, you weren't calling me Mr. Mayor that night up at the Plaza Hotel when... uh, 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 Simon, my wife. My dear, this is Simon Templer, an old, old friend. Apparently. Simon, my wife, Prudence. How do you do? Married five years now, since you and I last saw each other, Templer. Sit down, sit down. Um, my dear, uh, business. Uh, I'm getting worried, Russell. I've told you, my dear, there's nothing to worry about. I can't help it. <laughs> I sometimes wonder, Prudence, if you would be as worried about me if I stayed away a few days. You wouldn't stay away a few days, Russell. Good night, Mr. Temple. Good night, Mrs. Tower. Good night, Mrs. Tower. Don't get up, Brenda. Well, our city has a very beautiful first lady, Mr. Bear. Uh, thank you. As you see, Templer, I haven't told her about Bill. I'm afraid that her reaction would be, well... The reason we sent for you, Templer, is that the mayor's son is being held a prisoner. You might say a political prisoner. By whom? Packy Flynn, or those who work for him. I didn't know Flynn was that crude. What's his angle? It's not crude at all, Templer. As you know, the mayor's been forced into this special election by false charges of graft and tie-ins with gangsters. Flynn's candidate, Wickersham, has made this the main theme of his campaign. And he's making serious inroads. And I haven't been able to reply because they're holding Bill. It's horrible. 
Bill is the price of silence. Exactly. If we reply to the opposition's charges by showing his link with Packy Flynn, the head of organized crime in the city, well, Bill might be... Well, when I think of that hypocrite Wickersham accusing me of corruption, when all the time he is in the camp of corruption, seeking to lay his avaricious hands on the public treasury, whose funds must inevitably, my friends, come from the pockets of simple, honest, working folk like those of you who tonight... Uh, well, let's neither here nor there. Uh, how long has Bill been gone? Four days. And the election is only two days off. Have you reported this to the police? Unfortunately, Templar, it has lately come to my attention that my own police force is not entirely trustworthy. Corrupting hand of Patty Flynn has touched that also. After the election, I fully intend... Well, providing that I am re-elected, of course. Also, Templar, a clumsy handling of this thing might be extremely dangerous for Bill. Exactly. I am prepared to pay the price of silence about Flynn Wickersham if necessary... But the boy is the important thing. How does Flynn figure on getting away with this? Uh, what happens after the election? Well, he's gambling that I won't be elected. With Wickersham in power, any charges we might make would have little chance of success. Well, I get the idea. And you want me to find Bill, if possible. I should be everlastingly grateful. My gratitude is not a thing to be taken lightly, Simon. I'll do my best. Um, how old is Bill now? <laughs> it's been years since I've seen him. Twenty-four. Find him, Templar. When organized gangsterism waxes so bold, this is not the America I know and love. And this is not the America that those hardy pilgrims landing on that rocky, spray-swept coast so many years ago envisioned in shining imagery as... Well, that's, that's neither here nor there. Find my boy, Templar. I'll do my best, Mr. Miller. <laughs> Rocket you brought along, company. Mr. Flynn? Mr. Flynn is not in. No, I don't expect him. Thank you. Good morning. What can I do for you? I wanted to see Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn is not in. Didn't you just hear me say so? I never eat straw. Try it. You're missing half your life. Believe me. Well, you believe in living vicariously. <laughs> say, are you being fresh? Because if you're not, beat it. <laughs> I'll do my best. Uh... Eloise. Eloise. That's my favorite name. Well, it's not mine. How soon will Mr. Flynn be in, Eloise? Never. That is, even when he's in, he's out. And uh, how could we arrange it so that he is in? Dinner tonight, perhaps? Dancing? Yeah, maybe we could. No, let's not plan on it. I'd feel bad when you didn't show up, and you'd have me on your conscience when you didn't show up. So why don't you just go right on in? Mr. Flynn is the first door to the right. Eloise, you are destined for greatness. I'm destined to marry a guy who wears a leather necktie and drives a motorcycle. Don't tell Mr. Flynn I'll let you in. I wouldn't think of it. Mr. Flynn? Who are you? My name is Templar, Mr. Flynn. Simon Templar. I'm from the Clean Government League, and I'm interested in getting your analysis of the present campaign. I don't believe it. Mm. <laughs> Uh, how about if I applied for a loan? We don't give loans here, except to policemen and politicians. You don't look like either. You're very frank, Packy. Sure. I pay enough to hire politicians. They supply all the hypocrisy that's needed. Why don't you be just as frank with me, Templar? Well, what if I said I just wanted to have a look at the famous Packy Flynn? I wouldn't believe it. But I'd accept it. You aren't from J. Edgar, you aren't from the Treasury, so you can be anything else you want to be. How about the elections? Worried? After it's all over, I'll still be doing business. That's a word to remember. Business. That's what politics is. That's what gambling is. Business. We're all in business together. We may fight a little bit in public, but after it's over, we meet back at the barn and divide up the loot. In other words, you're not worried. That's what I like. A keen mind. I'll let one of the boys show you out. And I, uh, I think my keen mind and I can find a way. We'll make sure. I don't encourage nomads in my place of business. Yeah, Chief. Buster, what are you doing here? I just come down to bed a horse, Packy. Gorski's there. I wanted you there. Huh? So go home and stay there, but... First, show our friend out. Tell us your mouth hard or so? Soft, but thorough. Let's go, friend. Goodbye, Packy. I'll give you a message to the Clean Government League. Do that. Always interested in clean government. But I don't think it'll ever be popular. Well, let's just say it will never replace baseball. Back to you, Buster. I'll give him your message. Thank you. 
And goodbye, Eloise. Oh, leaving so soon? Well, I'd love to stay, but Buster insists we eat and run. Buster. Mm. We'll let this guy in anyway. You? So fire me. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Over here to the elevator. Mm. You interested in horses, Buster? Mm, yeah. I got some information this morning on something at Bay Meadows. No, I never bet that. Uh, got my own system. Mathematical. You count up three horses from the bottom, divide the speed rating by the number of winners the jock has for the meeting, uh, copy four, and then you... You, you, you. Well, I, I gotta have paper and pencil. Well, this might be the one to get even on. Yeah? Well, I, no, I know. I never bet that. Oh, yeah, but this is straight from the owner. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, what you see? Well, I'm waiting to hear this afternoon. The owner won't release it unless he's sure. But, um, if you give me your uh, address. Ah, uh, no, 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 not a little bust. I don't even give that to my wife. <laughs> So long, friend, and don't try to tell me. Well, why should I? Huh? Take it easy, Buster, and, uh... Oh, say, you haven't got a match, have you? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, thanks. And friends, yeah. stay away from tips and packy flint. With horses, you wind up in a barrel. With packy, the barrel is full of concrete. <laughs> Buster, you kill me. Huh? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> See you. See you later. Well, what'll it be, Mr. Temple? Uh, I've been pounding the pavements, George. Some uh, foot lotion, huh? Foot lotion? Yeah, over ice. Oh, you had me worried. <laughs> foot lotion. Over ice. Well, here you are. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and now some for the left foot, George. Okay. Mr. Templer, isn't it? <sighs> Mrs. Towers. Won't you join me? You just watch me. Hoping to see a friendly face at the bar. First lady of the city isn't supposed to be seen drinking alone. At your service. I'm as patriotic as the next. Gibson, please, George. Coming right up, Mrs. Towers. You look tired, Mr. Temple. Mm, I've been trying to run down the home of a book of matches. Well, each to his own taste. May I see them? Certainly. Here. Eat slimettes and grow thin. Any success? Growing thin looking, but no success. Oh, that's sufficiently cryptic. <laughs> My errand is much more simple. Russell is upstairs addressing the Young Republicans Club, and I'm a fugitive. When I look out into this sea of shining faces, I know that the future of America is assured. Pretty much like that. Russell is nice. He's gentle. Honest. One Gibson for the lady. Thank you, George. And go. Well, each to his own taste. I'll take the knife out, Mr. Templer. I'm not going to tell you the story of my life. Not on one drink. Have another. I'm a student of human nature. I'm going to try this one on for size. Why does a girl marry at 18 to a boy 20 who's got just as much money and just as little aim in life as she has? Divorce him at 21 and then at 24 marry a man twice her age. Mm, first she marries to get away from her family. Then she marries a man old enough to be her father to return to her family. Figuratively, that is. Should have met you years ago. Would have saved me $10,000 in fees for an animal. I'm a thin, merry work. Prudence, about Bill. What? Did Russell want you to spy on me, is that it? No, but that's part of your life you didn't tell me. It doesn't mean anything. Never will. But if anything's happened to Bill, I'll... Would you give me a cigarette? Of course. Oh, here's a light. Hey, George. Huh? Where'd you get those matches? Oh, these? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I think in a little greasy spoon I eat in at Fourth and Elm. It's called Ma's Lunch Bucket. Why, you collect match covers, Mr. Templer? It's a business, George. Prudence, I've got to go see Ma. 
Have a drink on me. Have a bowl of bean soup for me, Simon. Do you always get hungry this sudden? Let me see I got into politics. You never know what meal is going to be your last. See you at the polls, Prudence. Ma! Hold the phone, hold the phone. Well, what do you want? Now, I'd like to know if... You don't the... want to eat here. Anybody who eats here when he can afford to eat somewhere else is crazy. Anybody who eats here is crazy. I know. I do the cooking. Uh, thank you, Duncan Hines. I just want to know if you, you give out this kind of matches. Mm-hmm. Well, sure I do. What's the matter? Don't they? Do you happen to know a not-too-bright gentleman with a pushed-in face answering to the name of Buster? You sure do. Lives in the building across the street, 4C. Comes in here a couple times a day for food to take out. I suspect him of feeding a woman, except on my food, she would have left him. Ma, please accept my undying gratitude and an autographed picture of Alexander Hamilton. Well, my favorite president. Thanks, Sonny. Oh, 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 who is it? Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah? Oh. Oh, it's, oh, it's you. Well, oh, beat it. I was just passing by, Buster, and I thought I'd drop in and take... Take your foot out of the door. I don't want to get rough. I got confirmation on that tip I mentioned, Buster. Yeah? Uh, how'd you find me? Packy told me. Maybe... Come in, come in. But don't get twitchy. I got a cure for that. It yeah, will point the cure somewhere else, Buster. Blue girl in the night that they met us. Look, sir. You sure? It's a boat race, Buster. The jocks are all carrying oars instead of whips. Yeah, them crooked jocks. They cost me plenty, even with my sister. Better hurry, Buster. The night is just about off. Well, uh, if you're sure, hand me the phone, will you? Sure. <coughs> hated to do it, Buster. But I think it was a bum tip anyway. Hey, Bill. Bill, are you in there? Bill. Bill. Bill, now hold it. Wait a minute. I'll take out the gag. There. Thanks. Simon Templer. Hey, you've got a good memory. You all right? Foggy. Dope in my food. Keep me quiet. Who sent you, sir? Your father, Bill. Oh? Yeah, we better get out of here if you can make it. Yes, I can. Uh, it's all right. Let's help me a little. Sure. We'll take you over to your father's place. No, no. Mr. Templer, I got my own apartment. I have to get a good night's rest before my father sees me get all upset. How do you say so, Bill? Hey, what day is it? Election is no uh, no, no. The election's tomorrow. Oh, that's good. You want me to phone your father? No. I'd like to call him as soon as I get home. Let's go. You sure you'll be all right at your place, Bill? Sure, I'll be perfectly safe. Besides, I got a gun there. Oh. Well, so long, Buster. Thanks for the hospitality. Oh, Templar. Come in. The mayor's been expecting you. Templar, good morning. Any luck? Had breakfast yet? Sit down or something with me. Then I'm going out to the polls at Old Findlay. What time are the photographers due? Mayor Towers, what did you mean, any luck? Well, it's not Bill, of course. Didn't he call you last night? Bill? Bill called me? There wasn't any call here at all? Findlay? Nothing at all. Should there have been? I found Bill late yesterday afternoon. What? I took him to his apartment. He said he'd call you. Why, I think we'd better get over there. Uh, Finley, you stay here and handle things. But the photographers, Mr. Mayor. Photographers? Well, um, well, they can wait. For once, they can wait. Come on, Simon. Temper, I'll never forgive myself if anything's... I mean, if Bill... Oh, it's probably nothing... He was pretty well knocked out from dope. Maybe just fell into bed and is still sleeping. Yes, that's it. That, that must be it. He's still sleeping. Oh, here we are. Bill? Templar, do you think that... Let's try the door, hmm? Ah, it's open. 
Bill? Bill? Where's his bedroom? In here, I think. I have been here so seldom. Well, there he is. Bill, Bill, wake up. <laughs> Look at him. Even as a kid, you couldn't get him up with Wait a, a minute, Bill. Bill. With, with his own gun. Why, Temple? Why? I don't know. I'm not even sure he did. Sit down. But the, the, the gun. There in his hand. Come away, please. <laughs> Politicians shouldn't have children, Simon. They, they shouldn't. You, you never get to know them. You, you make it pointless to see them following Thursday. And then one day they're grown up. And they're strangers to us. But Bill would have made a great politician. If he wanted. He had the makings for it. I, I, I remember his grade school graduation. Oh, it was fine. Polonius' advice to the actors. Neither a power nor a lender be. How's it going, Finley? We have the latest returns from 233 out of 594 precincts. For Mayor, Wickersham, 200,314. Towers, 324,108. Congratulations on a winning campaign. Thanks, but we expected it. Did you? Mayor coming down? Well, you can understand how he feels, but he's never seen an election night at campaign headquarters yet. I imagine he'll be here. Well, Mr. Templer from the Clean Government League. Pleased with the election, Mr. Templer? Hello, Packy. How's your head, Buster? The horse lost. I looked it up this morning. I took advantage of you. What are you here for, Packy? Came to celebrate. What else? In spite of backing Wickersham? I back both candidates. That's the safest way. But I back Towers with more money. Interesting. That's not what you told me, Finley. I didn't. Well, what Packy Flynn does with his money is his own business. He doesn't always consult me before he does it. Oh, I see. Well, well, good evening, gentlemen. Templar, Packy, Buster. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. It's a landslide. Ah, well, it's always a good feeling to receive a mandate from the electorate, for in the long run, it is the people who will affirm or deny the truth of the principles that I... is, well, some other time. Uh, you heard about Bill, Packy. Papers haven't carried it yet, but I heard. Tough. Thank you. I asked the papers to cooperate until after the election. Time enough then to look into the boy's motives for... for doing what he did. Finley, have you found Prudence yet? Yeah, no, Mr. Mayor. Have you seen her, Templar? I haven't, no. Well, she'll... she'll be along. She'll... she'll be along. Was there anything you wanted, Templar? Just to be in on the celebration with the rest of the family. Huh? Oh, oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, do we have a bottle, Finley? I... I don't feel much like it. Prudence... My dear, where have you been? I wanted you to be with me today. I I needed you. His honor, the mayor. Sit down, my dear. Oh, I'd rather stand. Victory celebration. Another glorious mandate from the people. Given the grand choice between two thieves, they chose the one with the most experience. Prudence. I think you'd better leave, Temple. Do you? I don't think so. I think it's fair that the people have at least one representative present. Templar, you may not be quite as stupid as I thought. Or as they thought. Or as they thought I was. Prudence, who has been talking to you? Bill, last night. He called me and I went to his apartment. And that's the first time, if that's what you're thinking, Mr. Mayor. Get her out of here, Finley. Let her talk. Thank you, son. I'm interested myself. And thank you, too, Packy. You know why you were brought in on this lovely affair, son? I'm putting two and two together. Ostensibly to find Bill. He was kidnapped by you, Packy. That's interesting, isn't it, Mr. Mayor? But he wasn't held as a hostage for your silence, Mr. Mayor. He was held until after the election because he had found out things about his father and Packy Flynn. His fine, honorable father. He was threatening to go to the voters with it. But it was just until after the election. After then, I could have persuaded him. He wouldn't have said anything then. I, 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 I could have reasoned with so, him. So, a little parental restraint until then. And if he talked later on, I was your protection. Flynn was the villain, and I was looking for Bill on your behalf. Only I wasn't supposed to find him. 
Or maybe if Bill talked too much, you would have tried to throw Flynn to the wolves, using me as evidence. Oh, wow. No, 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 Patty, that wasn't it. Go on, Sam. Only I found Bill. That's what disrupted things. You've got to understand, Temple, that when you're in politics, you've got to make deals. You know that. Why, everybody makes deals. It's, it's just business. Sure, sure, I understand. But Bill didn't. No, Bill didn't. He never would. He thought the poor, dumb, long-suffering voters who pay the bills should have more for their money than the choice between two thieves. And he was going to see that they got it. Prudence, we can talk later about why Bill... Why he did what he did. Why he killed himself? Do you think he killed himself, Simon? No. Templar. He didn't. When I talked to him last night, he was alive. He knew what he had to do, and he wanted to live. Well, then, who? Not me. Not Packy Flynn, good people. I stuffed their mouths with dollar bills. Much cheaper in the long run, and just as sure. But you couldn't stop bills now, Packy. True. But then he wasn't a politician. Buster, I trust you have a good alibi for last night. Well, give me time and I can get one. I don't think you'll need it. Bill wouldn't have let you into his apartment. He was killed by someone he knew. It was a good act you put on this morning, Mayor. But you knew last night that I found Bill. What? Packy would have called you right away. Oh. Goodness, you don't think that... You, you can't... No, not you, Mr. Mayor. You sent someone to reason with Bill. Your hatchet man, J. Chase Finley. Be very careful what you're saying, Temper. I'll try to be, Finley. Your reasoning didn't work. Bill probably ordered you out with his gun. There was a fight, and you shot him. Then rigged it to look like suicide. It's your word against mine and the mayor's. Finley's right, Tim. Your accusations are not only in bad taste, they're also... You. You, Your Honor, the mayor. You killed him. Prudence. Maybe Finley pulled the trigger, but it was you who killed him. Killed him with the years of neglect, of hypocrisy, of building up an idol of the people. And then when he found out, you delivered him into the hands of thugs. You stood aside and let Finley murder him, and now you're backing Finley. Sinner's son, you did. Who was Peter's? Maybe it was ill-advised of me not to turn Finley over to the police immediately, but... Towers, you're throwing me to the wolves? Well, after all, while I don't doubt that it was... Or might have been unintentional on your part. Why, you... Drop him, Buster. Sure. Very well done, Buster. Goodness, this will all come out. It, it, it's really a matter of adjusting ourselves. You see, I, ne- I never explained about politics before because I, I, I didn't think it was necessary. Maybe if we go away for a while, we... Prudence. Look, Tars. I'll talk to you later, Flynn. Later. Looks like we better hunt up a fresh mare for ourselves, Buster. Yeah. <laughs> you pretty sure you can buy up another one in the open market, huh? Packy? You know a lot more where this one came from, Saint. And the money is right in my hip pocket. How about the voters? The voters? <laughs> Who are they? Voters? The people. The people eventually catch up with you, Packy. May take them a while, but they will. They always do. You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine tons of earth and stone crushing down on your home? Can you visualize floodwaters roaring through your front door? Can you imagine a forest fire sweeping your home and possessions in its path? Could you and your family be stricken in an epidemic so severe that it is a real disaster? It could happen somewhere in the United States this year. The Red Cross has helped thousands in similar situations, and it will be called upon again this year. To be prepared for emergencies such as these, the Red Cross asks you each year for funds. Won't you sit down right now while you think of it? Look up the address of your local Red Cross chapter and mail your contribution for 1951. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the Saints. Good night.
This script of The Saint was written by Dick Powell. In our cast, you heard Peggy Weber as Prudence and Sandra Gould as Eloise. John Brown was the mayor. Lamont Johnson was Bill. Finley was played by Whitfield Connor. Mr. Flynn was Ken Christie. Ed Max was Buster. And Jerry Hausner, the bartender. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring with Errol Flynn and Michelin Prell in William Marshall's production of Bloodline. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer, Don Stanley. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Later today, there's another hour-and-a-half broadcast of radio's greatest show, The Big Show. Starring Eddie Arnold, Jack Carson, Eddie Cantor, Olivia de Havilland, Martha Ray, and many more. Your MC on The Big Show, of course, is the glamorous and unpredictable Tallulah. And tonight, Theater Guild on the Air presents Light Up the Sky, starring Joan Bennett, Sam Levine, and Thelma Ritter. Olivia de Havilland visits The Big Show on NBC. Welcome back. Well, an excellent uh, performance by John Brown as the mayor. Uh, one of those really great um, radio actors, um, probably best known um, for uh, uh, playing uh, Broadway on the Damon Runyon Theater and uh, also uh, playing Digger Odell on The Life of Riley. Uh, and he played that role over television as well. Um, and another one of those episodes, uh, really, um, uh, you know, I mentioned this when we did the episode, uh, set at the university. You didn't really see this sort of, uh, s- biting social commentary in, uh, detective shows like The Saints, uh, to the same degree that you uh, heard in these couple episodes. So these are somewhat uh, remarkable. And we're getting some of the very best uh, Saint scripts as we're getting to the end of uh, Vincent Price's run on the Saint. While we do have uh, five more episodes with uh, Tom Conway in the lead role, um, we actually only have uh, three more Vincent Price episodes after uh, this week. Uh, so, uh, the series so far seems to be ending, uh, as far as Vincent Price with a, on a very strong note. All right. Listener, uh, comments and feedback. And, uh, we have a comment regarding episode 1611, the formula for death. Uh, Stephen writes in on Twitter, enjoyed this episode of the saint, lots of surprises. And it's always great when William Conrad shows up. Definitely. And uh, we will look forward to another episode of The Saint next week. Be sure and join us next Monday for that. Tomorrow, it's an episode of The Adventures of Ellery Queen. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. 